It's increasingly recognised that some of the world's most pressing environmental challenges are not going to be addressed by scientific and technical means alone. Here at the University of Exeter's Cornwall campus, we are also thinking about the social and cultural dimensions of environmental challenges. A lot of what I do is to try and understand and explain the tensions that can occur between conservation efforts and development initiatives, either abroad in Southeast Asia or East Africa or here in the UK. A lot of work has gone into understanding how to protect and conserve marine and coastal ecosystems. However, this has consequent impacts on people living by and depending on these ecosystems. As such, my research adds a social dimension to conservation work to make sure there aren't any unintended consequences of these interventions, such as pushing the already marginalized into serious harm. A small but growing body of researchers and scientists are now working on this important topic. But what we really try to do here is not simply to add more complexity or hinder conservation efforts, but to find ways to navigate this complexity and find acceptable outcomes. One such way we've recently been doing this is by creating tools and approaches to identify and work through what we call trade-offs that might occur and arise from conservation interventions such as those uh, from marine protected areas. These may be good for the environment, but detrimental in the short term for some groups of people. Or they might be good for some people, like those in the tourism industry, but less palatable for certain groups of people like inshore fishers. Our Map to Trade-off Analysis tool that we've recently created allows decision makers and planners to go through these different types of trade-offs, think through and deliberate whether they're acceptable or not, and find ways to compensate or adapt to those unacceptable outcomes. Our key aim is to create outcomes that are good for both people, but also the natural environment that they depend on. I'm a cultural geographer and I have a background in heritage studies. On the face of it, it's not obvious how I would be related to broader questions around environmental management, but actually in the work that I do, I'm quite involved in thinking about how historical and cultural understandings of environments can help us think about future environments and landscape change particularly. One area of research that I'm quite involved in at the moment is thinking about things like rewilding, natural flood management, mass tree planting. So these are big initiatives that are coming down to help us meet targets around climate change and biodiversity. And I get involved in those conversations because very often we think about those as one-dimensional problems, but they're actually multi-dimensional problems and they require multi-dimensional solutions. There are very ambitious tree planting targets in the UK at the moment. And one way to do that is to put in plantations of the trees that will draw down the most carbon. But other ways to think about that are really to try to understand some of the histories of those landscapes, which trees were there in the past, how people have been involved in helping trees um, establish in certain places and not in others, which species are most appropriate, which species help us maintain that connection perhaps to that past landscape and understand future change not as discontinuous with that past, but as something that actually has some kind of continuity. My research applies social and interdisciplinary methods to help develop and maintain sustainable relations between humans and other animals. My work on wildlife has mostly focused on the management of introduced and reintroduced species, so that's animals living wild in the UK as a result of human activity. A key focus of my work in this area has been the development of social feasibility and impact assessments for wildlife management projects. These tools can be used prior to implementing initiatives such as an eradication, so that's the complete removal of an introduced species from an area like rats from an island, or the reintroduction of a formerly native species like the beaver. Social impact assessments help conservation and wildlife management organisations to understand the social or political landscapes that they're working in and to address the social challenges that their projects might face. We work closely across the social sciences, natural sciences and humanities to develop integrated thinking and solutions to complex social and environmental issues at a range of scales. In particular, we apply contemporary theory and tools from the social sciences to understand and address challenges to marine and coastal sustainability, to nature recovery and to wildlife and domestic animal management.